Hello everyone, Unporkable here, and we're doing kind of a different video today, okay? I've had some comments asking me how I make my thumbnails, so I thought I might as well share that with you. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is download this texture pack, uh, which is in the description. It's the ultimate thumbnail maker, and I'll link it in the description, but you wanna download that and make sure it's the top pack you have, and then go back out and make sure it's all equipped and stuff. Then you're gonna go in here. I already have a world made for this, but you're gonna want a creative, make a creative world. Okay, so I'm here in my creative world, right? And you're gonna wanna go into the search bar and just search up green and use this green screen block to place something like this, which is just like a barrier thing. And that doesn't need to be here, but you are gonna wanna build this and it'll be used as your green screen. And then you're gonna want to get all the chainmail armor on or in your inventory and put them on one at a time. So you use this to like set which thing you're doing and actually uh, if you press F8 on your keyboard, if you're on PC, you can, my keybinds are in the way, my keystrokes, whatever. But you see that over there, that tells you what they all are for. So like the helmet is to choose which armor you want and then you punch, sneak, jump, or sprint. I want diamond armor, so I'm gonna punch. This is the punching animation. So, I want, that is not what I meant to do, I want that one, and then player offset, you don't really need this one, but I just make it 0.5, it puts you off the ground a little bit, stupid chicken, get out of here, and then uh, running animations, I want that one, and then you go into third person, and look, you're doing the thing, so I'm actually gonna turn my third person name tag off just so that's not showing there. And then you can, like, hold a diamond sword. This is what I like to do for mine. You can do whatever armor, armor combinations you want and stuff. But you want to go like this, and then you want to go into your settings, and just right up here, instructions and tools is the quick FOV changer. But you can change your FOV like that. And actually what you want to do is grab an arrow and put it in your offhand, and then you can punch, and it lets you move around freely, and you can see the model you've made. So, yeah, what, well, first person, there we go. And then F11, hold your sword, and then Windows Shift S to take a screenshot, and just screenshot your item with the green screen behind it, like that. And then I just like to go back and change my settings back to the way they were. There we go. Perfect, and then just go back into the normal that, and we can take all this stuff off and be ready to use it the next time we record. But now we are done in Minecraft, so we're going to want to head over to paint.net. This is a free plugin. I will link it in the description. It's not a plugin, it's a program, but I will link it in the description. And I already have one of my thumbnails here, but you're going to want, if you, you do control N, and you want to make one that is 1928 by 1080, width 1928 not 1920 and then height 1080 so that's what you're gonna want to do not that that's what my screenshot was so you're just gonna i already have this for my one of my other thumbnails so i'm gonna gonna i'm going to control a and then control x to delete it and then what i'm going to do is go into my file folder i'm gonna go into my pictures my screenshots and then scroll all the way down to this one here click on it and then drag it in here and add layer and then you're gonna do shift s at the same time and press shift on the green and then you can change this as you want if it's selecting more than just the background but you want it to select only the background and then do Control x to delete it and then you can select it and move it around and if you hold shift while you drag the sides it keeps it on the same if you're not holding shift it goes all wonky like this so make sure you're holding shift so you just want to do it like that. And then what I like to do is give it an outline. So you want to go effects, object, drop shadow. Okay, so editor pork here. Um, I kind of forgot to say this, but the drop shadow feature is actually a plugin so that you need to download. So I will link the plugin you need to download in the description. So just go to that Mediafire website and download the exe file. You should just be able to open it and install the plugins that way. Uh, if that does not work, just look up a tutorial on YouTube. I'm sure someone's made one, but 
I haven't done it in a while, so I don't remember how to do it, or else I would show you how to do it here, but so I'm sure someone else knows how to do it, so just a quick FYI. Make the drop shadow white, uh, no widening, widening radius, but no blur radius, and that just makes it so it's not blurry at all, but it's just a solid outline, like that. And then background, we're actually going to go back into Minecraft for this one. Uh, this step is not required, you can just find a picture online, but I like it better if you actually go into the hive, and if you don't have replay cinema, you can't really do this. I mean, you can just do it in your game, but it's going to be harder to do. Uh, I still have the texture pack on, I should have taken it off, but slash Q replay. And then we're going to go full screen and F1. Actually, we want to list all games and then skywars mega no no and just find a skywars or survival games or whatever you're gonna do skywars kits there we go we'll do this we'll go f1 and what you're gonna want to do is go to your first slot and just click it so it's paused right away just so that none of the players are in on their islands or anything yet and you just want to go around and find a good spot that you think you want your beat to, to to be your background so I look I like this right here so I'm gonna window shift s and screenshot the entire picture and then we can go back into paint.net and do control V and it should just paste it in there make sure you're on your background layer not the new layer where your screenshot was then we're gonna create a new layer and we are going to go into text up here the T click on that and then fonts I use a font where is it I use a font called let me find it. Com Comica Axis. This is the font I use for my thumbnails, but you can use any font you want. And then font size like 84 is good. And then we're just going to call this Tutorial. If I can spell Tutorial. And you're going to want to change it to white and make sure the text is white. We can actually increase this font size since it's only one word. So it's going to be less. So Tutorial. There we go. We can just put that right there. Go to your select and click on it. Then do shift S and shift on the white and drag this up some to make sure it's selecting the all of the text. And then you're going to want to go over here to your color picker. Click on the white or the black and change it to a color. And then click on the other one and change it to a different color but of similar because we're going to make a gradient. So like that. Actually, I want this to be a red gradient. So I'm going to change that to like red and orange. Press G on your keyboard, and then just drag like this over the thing, and it'll make you a gradient. And then what you're going to want to do is create another layer. Go back to the layer with your text on it. Do Shift S. Shift while clicking on the outside, and drag this back down so it's only selecting the place where there is no text. Go back up to this layer. Click on this black and white box right here, and then go into F. Just click F on your keyboard. Press shift and click on the blank space and it should do something like this. Then what you're going to want to do is go into effects, object, drop shadow again, make another white drop shadow but make this one blurry and make it a little bit wider like that. Do shift S, shift on the black and control X. And then you'll have something like this. It looks really bad right now but you're going to want to double click on the layer where you had the drop shadow. Change the blend mode from normal to overlay. And then OK, and look, it looks a lot better. Then you're going to go down here, make sure you're still on the layer with the overlay, and click Merge Layer Down. So now you have a layer like this. Then what you're going to want to do is create a new layer, drag it below that, click on this shape icon, and then make a white rectangle around it, just like this. And then what you're going to want to do is go over here, click on the More thing, if you don't, and if you don't have this popped up, click on this Colors right here, or you can press F8. And then what you're going to want to do is go into this opacity and drag it down just to like 115, 116. And then you're going to go into F and fill the inside of that. You can actually make the opacity a little bit dark more like that. And then what you're going to want to do is do shift S, shift on the white and do control X just like that. And then it'll create this background thing. You can merge layer down and then select it with S and then you can move it around and change the size and the orientation and stuff and put it like that. So yeah, and then one last thing I like to do is go back to my background layer and then go to effects, blurs, Gaussian blur, and just make this a little bit, just to blur the background a little bit. It gives it a little more detail and it just helps the 
items pop out. If you want to, you can add a little item in here of some sort. You can do whatever you want here. But this is how I make my thumbnails. I'll maybe even move this text down here a little bit, just like that. And I think that looks good. So yeah, this is the thumbnail you're seeing for this video right now. And this is just a quick little tutorial, but I've seen some comments on how to do this. So I thought I'd just show you. And if you guys want more videos like this on how to make my thumbnails or just anything like that, comment down below and I will think about making a tutorial on something if you guys want to see that. So thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please like the video and consider subscribing because it does help me out a lot actually. So yeah, and if you enjoyed this video, try clicking on this video right here. You might enjoy it, you might not. But hey, it's, it's worth a shot, right? I mean, you're on YouTube anyway. You're here to take risks, I think. Yeah, whatever. Okay, goodbye.